The Supreme Court will soon start its process of appointing Judge Amy Coney Barrett to fill the vacant seat left by the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The process often takes a few months, but with the 2020 presidential election on the horizon, it could be much quicker. Here's what a Supreme Court justice appointment typically looks like. First, the President of the United States is tasked with compiling a list of potential nominees. In the most recent case, President Donald Trump selected a list of about 44 possible picks. His list included familiar names like Ted Cruz and Daniel Cameron before he committed to nominating a woman. Before being voted on by the Senate, the 22 members of the Judiciary Committee will conduct an extensive scrutiny of the nominee's history. The process usually starts with the nominee answering an elaborate questionnaire for the Senate to examine. It includes everything from a list of every candidate they have ever represented, to their sources of income, travel destinations, past legal decisions, interviews with news media, and more. The questionnaire is often hundreds of pages long. Then, the FBI will begin a background check and the Judiciary Committee will also start its own background investigation. Because Amy Coney Barrett was considered by Trump when he replaced Justice Anthony M. Kennedy in 2018, much of her vetting may have already been done. The nominee will then begin calling and meeting with as many senators as possible. Quick, 15-minute to one-hour-long meetings are conducted so senators can learn how the nominee thinks and the nominee can learn about concerns the senators may have. Democrats and Republicans will argue the details of the confirmation hearing, including when it will be held, how long the rounds will last, and how many outside witnesses will be allowed to appear. This debate will likely be different this year, as the Senate has to take the global pandemic into consideration when making plans. During this time, the nominee will undergo mock questioning with advisors to prepare. Televised hearings will be conducted by the Judiciary Committee, in which the nominee will be questioned with typically broad questions meant to expose how the nominee's judicial philosophies would apply to crucial issues. The hearings usually last three or four days, but could be shorter. The Judiciary Committee then votes on the nomination and sends it to the full Senate. Using a simple majority vote, the recommendation will either be confirmed, rejected, or sent to the Senate with no recommendation in the event of a tie. Just like the Judiciary Committee vote, the Senate vote requires a simple majority. That means 51 out of 100 senators must vote in favor of the nomination. Republicans hold a 53-47 advantage over Democrats in the Senate now, but two Republican senators have already stated that they will not support seating a justice before the election. If the vote results in a 50-50 tie, the Vice President, Mike Pence, will vote to break it. If the senators do not vote to appoint the new nominee, the president will go back to the list of candidates and pick a new one, starting the entire process over again. Nine justices make up the current Supreme Court, one chief justice and eight associate justices. The first Judiciary Act, passed in 1789, set the number of justices at six, one chief justice and five associates. Over the years, Congress has passed various acts to change this number, fluctuating from a low of five to a high of 10. The Judiciary Act of 1869 fixed the number of justices at nine, and no subsequent change to the number has occurred. However, some Democratic senators began discussing the possibility of adding more justices after the death of Justice Ginsburg. The Constitution does not specify qualifications for justices such as age, education, profession, or native-born citizenship. A justice does not have to be a lawyer or a law school graduate, but all of the current justices have been trained in the law. The Constitution states that justices shall hold their offices during good behavior. They hold office as long as they choose and can only be removed by impeachment. The court receives approximately 7,000 to 8,000 petitions for a writ of cert each term. The court grants and hears oral arguments in about 80 cases a year. 